How are you doing? Great seeing you. I'm fantastic. <laughs> it's great to see you too. We're like T minus 10 ish days from our trip to LA. So all smiles. Can't wait. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Love and it. what Sanya is referring to is that we're going to be <laughs> at uh, Josh Burson's Irresistible Conference in LA uh, Monday, Wednesday, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, May 23rd through the 25th. And the evening of the 25th, uh, we're going to have a gathering here in the San Francisco Bay Area at the Devil's Canyon Brewery. So uh, if you're in the Bay Area and want to join, go to profile.net, uh, register and come visit with Sanya, myself, and 100 of your best people analytics, uh, workforce <laughs> planning, employee experience friends. So uh, yeah, absolutely. Countdown is on. So, And speaking of employee experience, uh, we're going to talk about that today and how to enable empathy at scale. But for those who might not know, you, you mind sharing a little bit about yourself and Question Pro? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So my name is Sanya Lucina. I'm the president of the Workforce Business Unit at Question Pro. I'm also an organizational psychologist, eternal optimist, and my life, <laughs> you laugh because it's true, uh, <laughs> and um, my life calling is to make people happy in their work, in their life, have them be fulfilled. And a year and a half ago, I found my home for my life calling a Question Pro. And Question Pro is a survey analytics company that focuses on market research, um, customer experience, and employee experience, which is the part nearest and dearest to my heart. And we help organizations really connect with people better in all those different capacities and all those different ways. So for me, it's just been a place where I've been able to do a lot of research on what's going on in the labor market in the US globally, work with a lot of organizations to understand what is it that, you know, helps them stand apart. What is their culture? Who are they? Who do they want to be? How do they show up for their employees? So for me, when we talk about work, outside of work, life, it's all just this big blend of, you know, the one one goal personally and professionally, it's to make people happier in all aspects of their lives. And for me professionally, I focus on on the business aspect of it at Question Pro. That might be the well, most concise introduction I've done yet, Al. <laughs> It was, it was outstanding. I'm, I'm fired up. I get it. <laughs> um, let's start this way because employee experience has become a very common word. People have jobs with employee experience. Yeah. Uh, you know, some say, oh, it's a new way of framing how we're looking at the employee life cycle. And, you know, at the same time, uh, I was introduced to the book, The Purpose Economy, um, mm -hmm. in uh, 99. I'm sorry, The um, in Experience Economy. Um, Aaron Hirsch wrote The Purpose Economy by me, but The Experience <laughs> Economy, the book, um, and it cites you know examples from Disney, and mm -hmm. it also uh, really looked at how people are willing to make investments in experiences that mm -hmm. they value. And so mm -hmm. you fast forward and see how that translates into you know, work. You know, are mm -hmm. people willing to make an investment, apply their discretionary <sighs> effort in a place yeah. that they value, that they um, have some pride and association with? So yeah. anyway, without going further, you know, I uh, have this full skepticism uh, and like fear that it, this is not uh, this is a buzzword that's going to come and go as opposed to a fundamental way that yeah. we're going to look at human beings in the workplace moving forward. So with that yeah. as a staging, what is employee experience to you? Uh, you know, I think as you were saying that I was thinking all of us, most of us, <laughs> the vast majority of us have to work for a living, right? We have to do something to make money to be able to support the rest of our lives. And it's important to have the choice around where do we do that and how do we do that? And I think in an organization, to your point, like giving the discretionary effort, like if you're going to have to spend a significant amount of your life and your time doing work, given the choice, why wouldn't you do something that you feel good about? Why wouldn't you do something that you feel like you can make a difference given the choice? Now, one of the things that we've seen, and I, and I remember 
you know, for many decades at this point, employees are top assets and, you know, different things like that. And then you see like not great working conditions and organizations not walking the, the talk. And I think what's happened in the recent years, unfortunately, it's had this big impact where organizations, even if they believed it, but they weren't prioritizing it, realize like, oh, I have to now or else I won't have a business. These people will not come here. And that was partly because of the transparency of information, the fact that you oftentimes don't even have to set foot in a workplace to know what it's like to work there. So you self-select yourself out if it's not a good place. And then once you're there, you're not bound there to be there very long at all. You can literally step in and step out the next day if you're like, well, wait a minute, the promise that I was made you know, during my conversations pre-employment during the recruitment process, I see it already that it's very different. And so employee experience is just, it's this bigger part of the ecosystem. It's the bigger part of the promise that we make to people, but the promise that we make to the business, because they, those two can't be separate. They absolutely cannot. And what's interesting is you and I have talked to, you know, I, in our, at Question Pro, our business unit is actually called Workforce. Why? Because the workforce is changing more and more. It is much more than an employee. It's more than a contract and a gig worker. It's going to continue to evolve. And the way that we decide to contribute to work, to organization is going to forever shift. And so how we're impacted, how we participate in that is forever important, again, for both constituents. So what is employee experience? I almost don't want to define it because I want to continue to believe that there is a better way for us to create workplaces and workspaces for people to have all of those positive things um, to be able to contribute and want to contribute back to the society in, in the most positive way, because why wouldn't they? Um, and But how that's going to shift, I hope it's going to be significant and I hope it's going to be at a continually fast speed day mm -hmm. in and day out because we'll have the passion to do it the drive to do it and the abilities and the tools to do it as well and well thank you for that staging i couldn't agree more and i'm also uh you know very aware as are many of our listeners that particularly in job families where talent is scarce it, there, the value proposition has to be not only communicated but it has to be delivered consistently over yeah. time and if yeah. it's not being measured if there's not two-way communication between leadership and uh, managers and the organization um, at large namely employees workers then you know that can fall down that value proposition yeah. can you know, disappear it can not be delivered on so yeah i certainly yeah. celebrate what you're sharing so today i know you have put together a diagnostic uh, diagnostic <laughs> yeah. on you know, how to assess uh, an employee experience. So we're going to talk about yeah. that. Uh, we're also going to talk about empathy at scale mm -hmm. to hopefully Always. give you know, our, <laughs> our viewers and listeners an idea of yeah. you know, not only how to bring this to life, because many have existing employee experience initiatives, but really yeah. how to maintain and enhance this discipline. So, because to your point, the world is continually shifting and we mm -hmm. can get you know, increasingly granular, particularly given the array of data that are out there. So, you know, yeah. with that, you know, I know you have some things to share. You want to <laughs> jump in? I'll jump in, I'll jump in. And, and for everybody, we were, Al and I were laughing because we were talking earlier this week and I said, oh, let's just chat. I'm not going to do any slides. And he's like, Sonia Khan, do like, you know, like three or four slides. And then we were just catching up before he's like, you have slides? I'm like, I have 11. <laughs> 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 you tell me to do slides and I can't help myself. I do money. But um, in here's all seriousness, <laughs> yeah, there's, here's number one. It's just a cover slide. So one down. Um, in all seriousness, I think for me, Al, what you were saying when we talk about empathy, when we talk about what's going on, um, me being a researcher, first and foremost, in my heart, I go out there and read and I talk to people and understand what's going on. And so um, the first several slides, it's going to be research for people to think about my insights around it and then, you know, go look into different things based on what's more, most relevant. So um, the first few data points come from a study that we did with Radical earlier in the year around how are we feeling, right? Because I mentioned that I'm an internal optimist. And so before I jump into all the data that highlights around the improvement that we can make as a society, I wanted to share some good stuff. So I'm like, yeah, let's get energized. And um, in our study, we asked people how they're feeling. 
And nearly three quarters of people said that they had more courage to take action as a result of the pandemic. So this is people in general, not only HR teams, not, not only employees or people currently working, people overall are saying, I'm ready. I'm bold, I want to do something. And so to me, that's still, I've talked about this data a lot, but it still gives me goosebumps because I feel like it's this injection of energy around making a difference and actually going in and making a change. So people have that appetite and the desire for it. And then although a lot of people, we saw the great resignation and a lot of people were already saying, you know, we made a change, like 89% of people said they did something. I think for a while, a lot of organizations are saying, okay, the shuffle is happening and then people are going to come down, you know, early 2022, everyone's going to be settled in. And it's like this, you know, crazy tsunami is still happening and people are still changing and people are still, you know, discovering who they are. And so in our study, we also found out that 58% of people said that they want to make further changes ahead. So, all right, this is like my like, yes, people are ready. We've got courage, we got passion. So what are we going to change? So then I looked at um, everyone that knows me knows like I'm a huge fan of Harvard Business Review. So here's some different stats from um, articles that were published either this month or in the last couple of months. So one of them is um, an article called Managers Can Do It All and this, resonates so much with me. Why? The last couple of years I've been asked to talk more about the mental well-being in the workplace. And one thing that's emerged in those conversations is a lot of people saying, you know, it's up to the manager. It's up to the and I thought, you know, absolutely managers have this tremendous responsibility to be good to their people and coaches and guides, but we need to be really careful about how much we expect out of managers and in turn how much support we provide to them. So here in this study, Gartner found that 68% of HR leaders who were asked said that their managers were feeling overwhelmed. And it's overwhelmed because of this shift in what's going on in the environment. It's this shift in expectations. But then this is one that literally like the stat that kind of, you know, stopped me in my tracks is, well, what kind of impact does a manager have, right? And like for a long time, we've heard that, you know, the people don't leave organizations, they leave managers. But in this article, what they also highlighted is that having good relationships with their manager is the top factor in employee's job satisfaction. So your relationship, it's not the reason you just leave, but it's your actual satisfaction at the point, but it's also the second most important determinant in somebody's well-being, right? So no pressure managers, but <laughs> you're like the key reason in somebody's satisfaction. And then also, if you want to look at, you know, the greater good, um, you have this, you know, enormous responsibility for well-being. So what do we do with that, right? Um, Another another stat that I wanted to highlight, and this is again the the urgency around taking action today. As Al, you were mentioning, a lot of organizations—I would even maybe be bold enough to say most organizations—have some kind of employee experience programs in place. Yet, <laughs> nearly half, or forty-seven percent of employees, said that they are more stressed than ever before in their careers. And 37% of their organizations understood what they needed in their personal lives. So a third of people, <clears throat> as we're talking more and more about bringing your whole self to work and not you know, having that blend, they're saying, yeah, but I don't feel understood. And so what do we do with this, right? This is where you know, I was saying I, I work for Question Pro, we're a survey organization. I'm there because I wholeheartedly believe in what we do. And this is where, when you think about this great responsibility for managers and the role that they have and how they can be impacting their people in the workplace, the organization can help them tremendously because you don't need to have these extensive one-of-ones and these deep conversations with every single one of your employees to even have an indication of what it is they want that empathy can be done at scale. The organization can go in and say, hey, this is our workforce. This is their general sentiment. Now, I'm not saying oh, and you don't have to have conversation with your employees far from that, but the responsibility and the impact that the managers can have is tremendous. We owe them help. And the thing is like, we can, like HR departments, people departments, like they can go out there and they can get this brilliant insight at a higher scale. 
So managers have a much better indication of what their starting point is and already what they can be doing to help. And so I share one more article that's a little bit older, but this one I will talk about like until I'm blue in the face is what Adam Grant and colleagues published around surveys still being the best measure of engagement. Now, you and I, we've, we've known each other for years. I presented, you know, your different conferences around organizational network analysis and behavioral data. Like, I'm a huge fan, so don't get me wrong. But <laughs> when people tell me, oh, we're past surveys, we're looking at this, like a little part of my soul just dies because how could you not have a conversation with someone? Like, I think I always equate it to, you know, personal life. And I figure if my partner comes home and, you know, if I have data about him, how much he slept or what he did, like, oh, if he slept well, like, I know he had breakfast, he's got to be fine. I'm not going to ask him. <laughs> like, I have data to know he's been fine. And I looked at his calendar and it didn't look like he had that many meetings. Like, it's not a substitute for conversation. So for me, again, when we're thinking about this, like, ever evolving world and what do we do and how do we support people i work with surveys because i wholeheartedly believe in their power of what insights they can bring to the conversation to the organization and to the conversation now a couple more things yep i'll turn it to you and then we're going to talk about empathy and, and more Actually, yeah, let, <laughs> let me jump in on that real quick because yeah. um i too share that uh sentiment in that i heard the other day that, oh, we're not doing any uh, frequent surveys. Uh, we're doing our once a year thing and that's it. Um, and I too was just like, uh, <laughs> I don't agree. And it also was on the heels of me getting through the book, Emotional Agility by Susan David, who talks about and again, I'm not going to quote this uh, perfectly, but effectively, uh, our inability in our society to articulate how we truly feel. Like there's like three or four, okay, happy, sad, just very basic uh, emotional descriptions of how we feel and thus our ability to empathize with others and their different nuances of, of feeling. Yeah, I might be sad or I might be overwhelmed, but what are the causes of that? And what actually are the levers to help me stay at this organization to get to a better place? You know, that is an area of discovery. And the only way to discover what is appropriate, what the appropriate response is, is to have in conversation. And what I hear you saying is that you can, you can, you can do that at scale. Like, what are the inputs of a manager direct report yeah. conversation? You know, so, and many managers don't have the skills they don't to, yeah. to do this. So if there's insight and guidance on how to have these conversations that are based on data, that yeah. is timely, relevant, and actionable, then yes. we're all better off. So I'm sorry, I got I got all fired up based on what you, what you said. I, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you for that. And I, I appreciate that viewpoint. Obviously, I, I can't agree more. Um, and I, I think it's it's important to share those, you know, the different academics, the different researchers, the different thought leaders who are approaching this for everyone to have the information to to choose their best path. And so and these are, again, a couple more articles about <laughs> um, empathy and best practices. But I, there were a couple of things that really stood out to me. The, the one, you know, connect with empathy, but lead with compassion is again, empathy is so much about listening. It's about listening without preconceived notions, with as much of an open mind. Um, it's, a, it's an art as much as a science, but I think it's something really, really worth practicing. And then I loved, um, in, again, one of the most recent issues, there was an um, article called Empathy Rules. And I thought it did a really nice job because I often think of like Brene Brown and I really, really, really always want to be empathetic. And as much as I practice it, there are situations with my friends, colleagues, family, where they'll tell me something and I'm like, okay, okay, wait, 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 how am I empathetic? Like, what do I say? What do I do? Um, it's this constant practice. And one of the things that um, Sherry Turkle outlined in her empathy rules and I, and I highlighted it on this slide, she said, step back and recognize that you don't necessarily know what someone else is thinking or feeling. Stop, look, listen, and stay open. And this, 
This to me resonated incredibly with what I hear from organizations because in some ways they're terrified about what they're going to find out. But the thing is like, that's why you ask. There is nobody that knows everything about somebody else. The fact that you find something out is the greatest power that you can have because then you can act on it. And I was thinking about even Adam Grant and think again in his book that some of the best things that can happen to you is for somebody to challenge your way of thinking. So for HR professionals, for people teams that are going out there to think about a survey, if you can all at all change your mindset, that one, that way, like Al and I kind of have an unofficial book club. <laughs> we, we message each other like, oh, you Look, have to read this And I got, I got that right there for you. Yeah, see? <laughs> and I got this there for you. <laughs> that, that's how knowledge spreads. Yes. That's how knowledge spreads. Um, so so to me that's that's one of i think for people to be able to have that mindset and not go into the survey feeling like i need to know everything that's going on in my organization and i'm going to use this survey to validate it but use it as an exploratory measure and be excited about what they're going to find out because here's the thing they're always in life in every most beautiful best relationship there's something that can be better um that is always the case. It's case professionally. It's the case personally. Knowledge is power. And the more you understand people, where they're coming from and what they want, the better impact you can have. And the more you think that the best thing that can happen to you is that you find out something you didn't know, because then you can take an additional action that's going to have a bigger impact. That's the beauty of surveys. And that's the beauty of having those conversations and asking those bold questions and connecting with people. And then think about all the data that we just shared about managers and the beauty of sharing those insights at an organizational with, level with your man with the managers at an individual level so they know their teams better. Like you're arming them with the best knowledge you possibly could be. You're arming them to be a better person, to be a better leader. And then they'll step step up and take it from there. But to me, it's like, this incredible superpower. Um, you can tell that I really love what I do. <laughs> I, do. <laughs> I, I really do. Up. I really do. I know. <laughs> if only you had um, more enthusiasm, Sam. I know. Right? <laughs> but but, but so, you, so you to... have the passion, but you also have the depth as well. So I just want to highlight that. It's, uh, you know, and, <laughs> and, and the obvious preparedness. You know, re yeah, please read well, another book or cite another article. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. well, let's see what the next slide is. Speaking coming up. of that. <laughs> Speaking of that, so no, just um, what I wanted, this is a little bit around, you know, the question flow philosophy. And now you mentioned before, you know, um, the different, like the life cycle of the employee and what does that look like? It's going to look different. And a couple of years ago, I was reading, you know, an article that said that the average tenure of a person is two years now. And I thought, oh, two years, annual surveys. Oh, no, you know, how do we change that? Why is it two years? How do you keep somebody in the organization? There's this huge focus now on candidate experience and all the people that we're interacting with. And how did we do, you know, for the people that are coming in the organization, what impression do they have for people who are not? What could we do better in the future? Because maybe they'll come back again. Like we want to make sure we understand that. Um, one of our clients we were working with and she had this amazing idea of um, anniversary surveys. And I thought, how cool is that? Like very few organizations do that, but it's, you know, in your birthdays and your anniversaries, you tend to take a moment and reflect and say, how's everything going? What a great touch point for an organization to also tell you like, wow, happy anniversary. How are you? How's it going? What else can we do? And so there are all these different touch points where we can understand what people are feeling. People change and situations change. And one of the biggest thing I always tell people about their career is that don't expect that you will want what you wanted five years ago. Don't expect that you want the same thing as 10 years ago, maybe even two years ago. We evolve and we learn, um, but also the environment around us evolves too. Like now we're talking about flexible work, like it rolls off our tongue. Like it is to be expected. Two and a half years ago, it wasn't. It wasn't like this, oh, don't talk about flexible work, but it certainly wasn't as much of a norm as it is today. So there's all these life cycles. But then within each life cycle, within each survey, there are different steps that can be taken. What do I ask? What could be some really, really important things? What could be some really interesting things? What do I, what do I ask? Like, Sonia, I bought in. I, I want, you know, I love your idea of uncovering things that I didn't know but how do I do that? 
What are the best questions? How do I connect with people so they feel that I'm sincere about it? When I get the data, what do I do with that data? Um, how do I take action? And how do I know the action is right? Like, I'll, I'll tell you, I've taken many actions in my life, personal, maybe professional, they didn't pan out. And that's okay. And I'm a better person for it. And I learned from it. Like, it is completely ridiculous for somebody to put so much pressure on themselves inside an HR department to say every single action I take is going to be splendid. It's going to be successful. It's going to revolutionize this organization like it won't. And if those are the expectations we have, we'll never take action because we'll be so scared of like, are we doing the right thing? And what is that outcome going to be? And so at Question Pro, we have this practice called positive people science that my dear friend Anna leads. And that's where we help companies, you know, with those kinds of things. And I, I was thinking like, you know, I always make personal examples and you, you you know, I've been like under the weather for what seems like, you know, like seven years now, but I was also trying to self medicate for me and my son for a while. I was like, oh, cough, cough syrup. And then I would go to the doctor and she would say, no, Sonia, like actually it was something different. Do this. And I'm like, oh, well, look at that. It actually helped what she told me. And so I think for all of us to not put all that pressure on ourselves to know everything the best, that we're in an HR department and we can do write the best surveys and do the best things and we need to know everything. I think it's a, it's, it's a false expectation. For people who we work with, they will know their organizations better than we do always. And yeah. they're going to be passionate about it and know it inside and out. I live and breathe knowing what's going on in the labor market understanding what employee experience is and how we want to involve it and how we want to impact it. There's this great ability to put that together to really make the greatest impact. And that is where, you know, coming back full circle with a few minutes that we have left comes in the assessment that Anna on our team has built because she talks to organizations all the time. And she said, you know, she thinks about what is it that I need to think about, right? So it's like the what, and like, how do I do it? What should I be thinking about? What's important? And so we created this assessment that's three different pillars. One is around the connection of employees. And this is a quick screenshot. It's not a very long assessment, but I didn't put all the all the questions in there. Um, you know, around like, what is it like? How well are we connecting with the people? Do we feel like we know why people are coming? Do we know, feel like we know why people are going? Um, and then we also look at the other two sections. So it's only three different sections for the specific pillars. It talks about survey technology and how integrated is it in our organization? Does it actually give us what we need? And then is it a strategic pillar? Because again, in our philosophy, we feel like that it's important for it to be because of the empathy, the connectedness, the insight that it gives the organizations. And so we created this to help organizations narrow down like what's important for me to think about when I think about my job day in and day out and what I'm doing and then how well do I feel like I'm working like I'm performing on these different areas because all of us only have so much time in our days and so to be able to prioritize um, to understand the areas of focus and then prioritize the gaps I think is really powerful so this assessment um, I'll share in the screen real quick like it's it's super quick it's 21 questions three different sections. In the end, you get a report, you understand how you're doing on the three different pillars. There is an explanation of the results, recap of the results. Um, here is the URL where you can find it. There is a QR code that you can scan and take the assessment. And so for anybody that's interested in checking it out, also, if you do complete it, you get our contact information for a 20 minute complimentary session. And you might end up talking with me because I love talking with people as you can tell, and, and I love learning. I love learning, you know, articles and research I'm really passionate about, but speaking with people, I absolutely love to understand what's going on in, in, in organizations. What are my peers and colleagues focusing on? What are their challenges and truly be able to help them? So it might be me, it might be one of our, one of our team, but um, I would love for anybody, you know, that's joined, that's thinking about employee experience, thinking about culture, thinking about okay, we're almost mid-year. How do I make this a big year? What's important for me to think about? Where are my areas of improvement? Um, I really think that this is something that, that will help. And so that's why we've, we've created it and we put it out there in the world for people to take it for free, have a conversation with us that they want. Well, thanks for, I, I've had the privilege of uh, taking it. So yes. I mean, I'm a fan and I uh, certainly encourage those who, even who are doing it already, just to 
ascertain where they are relative to benchmarks, where they believe they might have, you know, some gaps and opportunities to improve. Because to your point, mm -hmm. we're living not only in dynamic times, it, moving forward, we'll always be in dynamic times. And the pace of change, yes, can it accelerate indefinitely? I mean, there's an argument around that. But what we do know is change is going to be ongoing. So, you know, we need to adapt. We need to have systems and processes, data collection methodologies that can accommodate that. So certainly celebrate you, what you all are doing there at Question Pro. And so how can those who are listening and watching learn more about you and Question Pro? Yeah, absolutely. So here's the link to the assessment, the QR code. I will pop in our my email, my LinkedIn, our <laughs> question for workforce um, URL. We also have 360. I'm on LinkedIn quite a bit. So for anybody who wants to reach out to me, um, I would love that. I am a huge fan of building strong relationships, sharing knowledge, really helping each other. And I think all of us have different experiences. We have different learnings. And, and the more that we can share that and create a community around it, I feel like we will make the world a better place faster. Uh, as Al was mentioning, we will be in LA at Josh Burson's conference. So if you are there, please come say hello. Um, we're going to be organizing a meetup in San Francisco. I'll be there for a few days. I didn't mention at the beginning, maybe for first time ever, I live in Buenos Aires, Argentina. <laughs> um, so if you are in Buenos Aires, definitely let me you know. We'll go have a coffee. But um, now I'm, you know, still fingers crossed, but starting to travel globally. So whether it's, you know, meeting virtually or whether it's meeting in person and in one of the locations, I would just love an opportunity to connect. So all the information about Question Pro is, is in the links, in the presentation, my personal information. So please... Um, if anything that I've said today is, you know, something you're thinking about or resonated with you, do not hesitate to reach out. All right, Sanya. Well, thanks for being your awesome self. Thank you for sharing. And uh, again, look forward to seeing you in less than two weeks. <laughs> yeah, thank you All for right. having me. Oh, pleasure oh, as always. Course. All right. Are you be well? And uh, yeah, thank see you, you soon. All right. Bye.